Hi there. Are you a parent who is about to send your child to school in Denmark? Or maybe you're thinking about moving to Denmark and you're not quite sure which type of school would be best for your family's situation? Well, this video tells you about the pros and cons of choosing either a Danish or an international school. Stay tuned. Come along as my Danish husband and our two sons show this American what it means to live a life in Denmark. My new Danish life. Hi there and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kelly and I'm an American mom who lives in Denmark. And when my family moved to Denmark, my kids were really young. My youngest was three, so we didn't really have to worry so much about school just yet for him. But my oldest was five, about to turn six, and already in an American kindergarten, which in Denmark is the same as grade zero. So he could read and write in English. He really liked school. We had a really good situation in his school that he was at. And for us, we needed to know all the specifics about what school life was gonna be like for him and which school was gonna be the best option because he already liked school. And if you are a parent, you don't want your kids to stop liking school. I mean, it's kind of all downhill from there, right? If they don't like kindergarten, if they don't like their first few years of, of school experience, sometimes it's hard for them to get into the, the rhythm of wanting to go to school. And when they're teenagers, forget about it, okay? How do I know? I taught American high school for over 13 years. So yeah, I was surrounded by a lot of times very motivated high school students, but then again, some not so motivated. And I really wanted to make sure that whatever school we were picking for our son, right at the beginning was gonna be one that he would have a good feeling about. But how do you know which one that's gonna be? Well, I've already gone through the experience. And so as a mother, of a child going to school in Denmark, but I also have had the experience of being a teacher in Denmark. And I wanna share with you what I have learned and what I feel can be good and bad things about both types of schools here in Denmark. Before we get too far into that, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I really am trying to get to 16,000 subscribers and I need your help. So if you have not already clicked the red button, please consider doing that during this video. Also, if you know of other people who are interested in this topic or who are struggling to make this same decision, please share this video with those people so that they also can get a little bit of an insider's view on this type of topic. Okay, let's get into it. First off, like I said, when we first moved here, my son was five, about to turn six. Now, when you go to a public school in Denmark, you have to start at age six. So technically, it was the spring, he had to go back to daycare if he wanted to go into a Danish school. For us, it was kind of the thought of, oh no, we've gotten him into this routine, this momentum. If he wants to go into a Danish public school, he's going to have to wait five months or so before he can actually go into that school. And he would have to repeat grade zero. And so that was a thought on our minds. You know, would he be bored in that situation because he could already read and write and they would be going back to the basics, like what is the alphabet? But we also thought about the fact that we did not know any Danish. My husband is Danish. That's fine, he's got that under control. But the rest of us did not know Danish at all. And so when we moved to Denmark, that was a, that was a concern of mine is that will my kids struggle in school because they don't know the language? And we thought that if he were to have to repeat grade zero, then it wouldn't be so bad because he would have that basic knowledge of all of that in English but now he would have to do it in another language. So we were in the mindset of, this is not the same situation if he goes to a public school. Then we looked at the international school and I actually got a job in an international school and I saw the curriculum was very similar to what they were doing in his American school. And I thought this would be very easy for him just to step right in 
and, and get going with what they were doing. And I know that he would not have to be held back at all. And then the next year he could go on to first grade and then so on. And I know that I would be able to help him also as an English speaker because all of his classes would be taught in English. And that kind of gave me peace of mind that there's one big thing of moving to another country, not knowing anybody, you know, you have all of this kind of anxiety and stuff that comes along with it. This would be one area where I wouldn't have to worry. My son could go off to school. And we were renting our apartment in a small town at that point in time. And so we had the opportunity to move to the town where they would be going to school. So it could be much easier because the international school was in a larger town nearby. So, so many things to think about. But what really are my pros and cons are of both of them? Now you know my situation. And if you stick to the end of the video, I will tell you which type of school we chose for our kids and how that is going now that they are in grades five and three. Our situation, we had moved to Denmark in March and we were thinking to ourselves, this is a good opportunity for our kids to be in daycare, to learn the language. I wasn't working at the time. Um, I was home, I was about to start language school. So it wasn't a necessity that our kids go to daycare, but we thought if they're ever going to make friends anywhere, they are going to need to be able to learn the language. And so we had a little boy who lived next door who was the same age as my oldest son and they played together, but it was very frustrating for my kids not to be able to communicate. So we put them into daycare right away for those last couple of months because we knew that the school year would start and my son would either be going into first grade or he would be going into kindergarten depending on which school we chose. And we thought, well, let's give ourselves a little bit of time to think about it. I know for a lot of families who are coming to Denmark, you know, that is just one added stress to everything else that's going on but it doesn't have to be. You have to think that what are your goals in your move to Denmark, for example? That's a big thing. For us, we wanted to move to Denmark. My husband is Danish, but we didn't have any long-term plans. And so not having any specific plans makes the choice a little bit trickier because you have to think, well, what is my goal? What is the goal for my children? Is it that they become fluent in Danish? Is it that they maintain the education that they started? What is most important? And it's usually what's most important to you as the parent because you're making this decision, unless you have older children who might have more of a say in the matter. My son was young and he really didn't know what was going on. So it was up to us to make that decision. So for us, if we had lived in Denmark, let's say for only a year or two years, it would make sense for us to put our kids in an international school. That way they wouldn't have to stop what education they had learned, relearn a new education, and then when we went back to the United States, have to relearn it all over again. That might be more of a stress on our kids than we would need to put on them. Well, we've now lived in Denmark for five years and we have started to come up with the idea that we have to make a decision. Is this going to be a short stay or is it going to be forever? And things can happen along the way that can change how you feel. But for us, making that choice made it easier for us to choose the school. Now, I know that there are also a lot of people who come to Denmark with older children. Maybe your kids are tweens or teens and you're thinking, it might be too difficult for them to learn Danish and do all of their own studies on top of it. Believe me, I get it. And that could be a, a reason for you to think, well, maybe I should put my, my children in a grade lower than where they're at right now if they need to learn the Danish. So that way they already know the information that they're going to be learning in school, probably. But <clears throat> so they won't have to focus on learning new information and learning the language at the same time. It's not a big deal to, to hold your kids back a, a grade if you feel it's going to help them in the long run. Now, when we are looking at an international school, we thought, oh, this would be great for us to learn, uh, get to know other internationals as parents. 
Um, my husband, we moved to an area of Denmark where my husband is not from, so he didn't really know anybody. So um, we would be starting over just as the kids would be. And that could be kind of nice to get to know the area from other internationals. It was also a really good idea for our kids because they could already communicate in English and they didn't have to learn anything new. And they would also be going to school with kids who understood what it meant to move from another place, perhaps leave your family behind. So there are some pros for that. And like I said, the educational level was the same. The expectations, the curriculum, the routines, it was pretty much all the same. They would be given grades and yeah, I mean, I felt comfortable as an American teacher that it would be still that program. But then I looked at the flip side of it. You know, when we're in um, a small town, we didn't know if we were gonna move at that point or not. And if we stayed in our small town, our kids would have to travel to this international school. And that's fine, but all the kids in the neighborhood, they would never be able to communicate with because they could never learn the language. And so when they wanted to play sports and do other activities, the language barrier would always be there. And then also the fact that they, they couldn't make friends as easy. If we were to send them to the international school and have to travel there, then that means we'd have to travel every time that they would have a play date or, or want to do something with their friends. And so it would make much more sense for us to live in the bigger town so that way we could be around all that. And that does make sense, you know, but again, you have to think, what is your goal? What is it that you want to get out of this experience? What is it that you feel is best for your child? There are a lot of people who move to Denmark for work and maybe it's for two years and they know that or maybe it's for a shorter period of time. International schools make it much easier for the kids because a lot of times when they have to leave and go from country to country, there's already, you know, a lot going on with them having to leave family or leaving friends behind. So it does make sense. And it takes a long time to learn another language. I mean, even for children, it takes time for them to learn. So you have to think, do I really want to put this stress on my child if we're only going to live here for a year? So for us, you know, that was a really big factor is language, but also social. You know, the little boy who lived next door wouldn't be living next door forever because we were going to be moving eventually. But there would be other little boys and little girls who would live in our neighborhoods. And the fact that they wouldn't be able to communicate with them, I think I could see it on their little faces. They couldn't communicate, but I could see that it was frustrating. And I know when we put them in a Danish only daycare, they came home many times saying, we don't know what they're saying. It's very frustrating. We don't know what's going on. But Luckily for them, they were at a young age where learning the language is much easier than it is for somebody like me, for example. I mean, I still struggle learning the language and we've been here five years. Another th part, when I look at the pros and cons, yes, I said that the international school's curriculum was very similar to what we have in the United States. It was actually a British one, so they're very similar um, countries when it comes to education. But... It's also something that you get from being in a Danish school is learning the culture and how you're supposed to be, right? We learn a lot about how we're supposed to behave by being in school. You know, our teachers tend to be like extra parents in a way because we're with them for a very long period of time as a student. So if your child goes to school in Denmark, there are a lot of Danish traditions that children grow up with. And if my children were to grow up in Denmark and we decided to keep this as our forever home, they would get some of those in the international school, but not really. You know what I mean? From being a teacher in an international school, I felt that very strongly that what was happening in other schools wasn't always exactly what was happening in the international department. So 
If your kids go to a Danish school, there are certain things that they do that kids just get used to. Oh, well, I know the third graders did this last year, and so I'm gonna be in third grade, so I'm gonna get to do this. And they learn certain songs, and it's all about really creating a Danish childhood. And it's not to say that you can't have one of those when you go to an international school, but if that's part of your goal is to have your kids really experience the culture, they're going to get more of that in a Danish school, most definitely. And also in the international school, they did have Danish lessons, so they would have to learn Danish. But of course, it doesn't come as fast if it's a foreign language, right? When you're studying a foreign language, it's it goes with your math and your, your other classes and science and, and things like that you learn a little bit at a time, but you're not fully immersed in it as you would be in a Danish school. And that's another thing, especially with my children who are um, part Danish and part American, they don't really get to experience what it is like to be a Danish kid growing up in a Danish school unless they go to a public school. So there are different pros and cons when it comes to that. And for us, what really was important was that they learned the language. Sure, they learned um, Danish in daycare. And if you're a foreigner who's been here for quite a while and your kids are in Danish daycare, they probably know Danish, no problem. Um, you know, but when we're thinking about the fact that, well, if our kids wanted to stay here and go to university, Yes, there are English programs, but there are so many more options for programs in Danish. And I also know that because I went back to school here. I just finished a marketing program in English. So I was lucky enough to find one that was close by that was in English, but that's not always the case. I mean, who knows what my kids are going to be interested in studying. But the thing is, is that when you are in your eighth and ninth grade year, you take tests here in Denmark. And those tests, one of the tests is in Danish. And sure, you could go to international school and, and do well on that test. But from being a ninth, eighth, ninth grade teacher in an, in an international school, I didn't really see that there were any international kids who ever did as well as native Danish kids. And I thought that I wanted my kids to have as many options as any other kid in this country. And that is a big reason why we chose to put our kids in a Danish public school. We stayed in the small town. We really like small town living. We like that it's easy, that the kids can go wherever they want to by themselves. And they're very independent. And we like the fact that we are getting to know people in this town. So it, to me, feels safe and it feels familiar. And the fact that the kids get to know other kids because they speak the language and they're also very aware of the cultural norms. They know how to interact with other kids. They know how to interact with other adults and nothing is foreign to them. For me as an American living in Denmark, Denmark is still foreign to me because I still don't have a 100% grasp of the culture. I live with three Danes. I can easily say that now. Even though my children were born and grew up for their first few years in the United States, they are full-fledged Danish. They have Danish mannerisms and they have the language and they are fully on the protocol of Oop, it's Friday, we're, we're going to watch this show and eat Friday's candy. And the way that we interact with each other is not like how most American kids would interact with their parents. And I feel it and I feel it and I feel a kind of a pull against it in a way because I am the outsider, not only in this country, but in my house. It is a very weird kind of dynamic that in the beginning I was so concerned with my children having a good adjustment that I didn't really take into account how hard the adjustment was going to be for me compared to everybody else in our house. So what's the moral of the story? Don't worry so much. 
for me, I, I just kept thinking, oh, my kids aren't going to be right on where they need to be. Um, you know, they need to be at this level in second grade and this level in third grade. And there's not so much pressure on that. You don't get penalized for not knowing things like on a standardized test. Oh, your child is not where they need to be. You know, there's some sort of punishment coming to the child. There's some sort of punishment coming to the parent as I would feel in the United States, even as a teacher. But it's different here because they're focusing more on the social aspect when the kids are younger. It's more important that they like going to school, that they like being around their friends, that they like learning. It's not so important that they're the best at what they do when they're little kids. It's not so important that, that they're all striving to get 100% on everything. They don't put the stress on that. And for me, it was difficult to make the adjustment to say, okay, I'm fine with that as a mother and a teacher to allow my children to be in a school where it's more relaxed. And it's allowed me to trust more because I know that my husband is a product of Danish public schools and he's doing quite all right. And that is my, my guide. Every time I feel a little, oh, they don't know how to do this yet. Oh, they don't know how to do this yet. I know it will come and I have to have faith. And I know that me as a concerned parent, I will be monitoring my children. I will be asking questions to the teachers because that's completely fine to do. Being in contact and making sure that your your children are doing all right. But I put on the brakes when it's at home. I'm not teaching them. I'm their mother, not their teacher. And I put my faith in, in the schools here and we've had such good experience. Now I know not everyone has had the greatest experience in the schools that you're in. I mean that's going to be the same in any country you go to in any type of school. There's no perfect school out there for some people. For us, knock on wood, I feel we found a really great school for our kids. And it's, it's just been really good feels ever since the beginning. Yes, there's still the language barrier for me, but my kids, and they're really native speakers in Danish at this point. So if you're worried about choosing the right school, know that you can always change your mind later on. But if your kids are older and you feel that the struggle is gonna to be too much with Danish, like I said, don't feel bad about having them go down a grade level. In reality, it's not gonna change things. When they're 30 years old, is it really gonna make a difference that they had to repeat a grade? It's not gonna make a difference to anybody here in Denmark if it in fact helped them have extra time to learn the language before perhaps they had to take a test. Um, if you've got younger kids, it's really your decision to make what you wanna do with them. You all have your own goals and your own objectives for what it is that you want your children to have. And for me, I want them to have a Danish experience. I want them to know what it's like to live in Denmark and I want them to be seen not as American expat children who happen to be part Danish. I want them to be seen as every other kid and have every other kid's opportunities in this country for their future. So that's what happened. Um, our kids have a variety of classes, just like what they would in the international schools. And um, yeah, uh, they bike to school. They have really good connections with their friends and they play sports with their friends and do clubs. And maybe things for us might be a little different because we don't have as many options of schools because we live in a small town. You live in a bigger city, there are a lot of different places where the, your kids can go to school. But again, you have to think of what's best for your family and what you're gonna feel good with at the end of the day. But don't feel that one size is gonna fit all and don't feel that you're stuck in a situation that you don't wanna be in. You can always change. I know people who have decided to put their kids in the international school when they were in fifth grade. I know kids who've decided to, or parents who've decided to take their kids out of the international school when they were in 
sixth grade or third grade or whatever. It's very different for different families and I'm sure you'll find what fits best for you. And hopefully you've taken a little bit from this and maybe it's made your decision making a little bit easier. If you want to look more into detail of my pros and cons list, I have a link in my description on the blog about it so you can read more about that if you want to have a little bit more time to process. So check that out. There's also more information on there about um, dates for, for school when school's closing. So it's important to know or special days that happen at school. And then also there's a post on there that talks about um, meeting people and how to be social and things like that when it comes to what to expect at the beginning of the school year, the very first day of school, um, how it's been since co Corona has come into our lives in the school system and things like that. So there's quite a few different um, school posts on my life in Denmark section of the blog. So be sure to check that out. Let me know your experiences with schools in Denmark. Um, if you're a parent or if you studied here, I would really love to know what your experience is like. Thanks for coming along on this video and I hope to see you in more. And please, again, help me get to 16,000 followers by clicking on that red button and sharing this video. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a good one. And as always, take care.